Okay, we've got the lower out of the way. The next step, uh, we're going to remove, these are our heater hoses, we removed the line off of, remember the, the coolant pipes were here? We're going to need to move those off of the heater core in the very back. Um, we do it here, obviously, because you got more room, you know, at this out of the way. So we're going to get in there and be able to take care of that. But one thing I want to point out, I don't know if we can get a good angle of this. Look, look here, there's motor oil, right? There's motor oil where the intake manifold was. When we put the injectors in, I'll show you more motor oil. We'll flip the, in, we'll flip the plenum over, more, more motor oil. It's pushing so much PCV, the car's got 2,000 miles on it. It's pushing so much PCV, this is actually getting in through here. It could cause you know, issues with uh, pre-ignition, things like that. But you just notice the amount of raw motor oil. Look at that. It's a lot. That's the reason for our catch can system, which we're going to install in this vehicle. So, what you want to do here, you want to clean off these pretty surfaces good. pretty good. Make sure you don't, Make sure drop, you don't anything drop anything into, into, into the runners. Uh, it sounds silly, but it's easy to happen. You can drop a nut, a bolt, a hose clamp, zip tie end, anything can happen. And God forbid, um, you know, you miss it and it's down in there, it could cause you a big disaster. So, I use the red rags and I just stuff them lightly into the runners, clean, there's nothing on them, and if anything falls on top, it's not going to run down in there. So, it saves you time, that's what I recommend. Some people use tape, but, you know, I keep it simple, I'm going to peel it back off. Um, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I recommend for you to do. Just finish and putting them back in there. And then the next thing uh, I'm going to show you back up over here is how to remove the short hoses way back under there get the short hoses left for the uh, heater hoses and right here we're going to use the razor blade to actually cut the hose so let's get get a good view this car's got some aftermarket equipment but let's take the clamps off okay and then you want to twist the hose but you don't want to use pliers or anything to squeeze it. It could deform the heater core, so don't do that. You want to get in there, use a twisting action, cut it first with a razor blade, and then uh, twist it off. All right, here we go. Got a nice long razor blade right here. And get from behind it, and allow it to open up and split. And you'll be able to twist it off. Hopefully you can see way back in here, one slit into the hose itself along the heater core. All right, and then if it's really stuck, you can kind of pry it away um, over and over. Real simple, get it in there, just a flathead screwdriver works good. And when you got it good, it'll just come right off. Okay, let's get the clamp off the other side, and then I'll show you exactly what um, what we did with the razor blade. Reach back in there. Orientating the clamps is really really the tough part there. So, reach back there, grab it, get your razor blade, nice straight one one slice, right where it attaches to the heater core. Should get through there good. And again, you don't want to use any pliers. Like you don't want to squeeze it, you know, grab a hold of it, force it or anything, because if you damage the heater core, you're done. Just pry it here, and it come right off. Real simple. You put one slice here, and it's peeled it back. Put our screwdriver right in there in the bottom. Kind of folded it away. Got it from the top, right over the top. And push it over. Give it a little twist, pull. It'll go straight out really really very simple okay all right so we got those two off pull some of this out of the way next thing here is we're going to source the oil for the turbocharger so we're going to feed oil to it and right here is our oil pressure switch the sending unit um, for the engine what we're going to do is we're going to in essence we're going to remove that we're going to tee into it and that's where our oil source is going to come from this unit right here, that's our oil cooler. 
So I'm going to show you how to get these connectors off and then we're going to remove the whole piece as an assembly and we'll assemble it on the bench. So take time here and we'll disconnect the connectors. So the red piece is a locking tab so you're going to slide that out and then push the button and it'll come right out. Again, red piece slides slides back. That's the lock for it. Slides back. That's the lock. You're going to push the button right there. And that's going to allow it to release. Next one over here. So you just squeeze, pull it out. Very simple. So now we've got our extension and an E10, I'm sorry, it's an E8 reverse Torx. E8 reverse Torx, probably the only special tool we're going to use in this process here. And there's a few bolts around the perimeter. We're going to loosen them and we're going to remove this as a complete assembly. Okay? It's a good tool for loosening things or running them down. You're not going to use this tool to torque things. Um, it just makes quick removal of components like this. So let me run around the outside here and I will just loosen them up. Okay, got all of them, that's simple. And that heater, the hose, the, the hose going for coolant going to it's gonna stay attached. Pick it up here. Now you're gonna notice some oil will drain out, a little bit of coolant, it'll catch and collect down in the valley. And then later, when once we have this out and we got our assembly before we put it back together, we'll clean that out. So get a rag, kind of keep it from dripping over everything and move it over here and uh, go ahead and set it down. All right, that's the coolant and the oil I was telling you about. See it down there and again our rags kept everything from just dumping right back in the motor. So real simple there, we'll use some red rags or some paper towels, whatever, push them down there, you can use the extension, push them, blot it. And when you got it pretty clean, you know, you can use some brake cleaner. Okay. So far we're like page 12 or so. Just to recap, I mean we use an angled pick, flathead screwdriver, 3 8 ratchet, a razor blade, pretty long, that's a good one, needle nose angled pliers, and this tool, it's not a necessity, you can use this instead, but this really does work pretty well, make it go by pretty quick, you know, and a few little power tools, but you can do it by hand. So nothing special except for one thing, we used the E8 reverse Torx. Other than that, this is, this is beyond basic uh, mechanics tool set here. So at this point, we're gonna put our oil feed line in. This is what we removed out of the valley of the engine under the lower intake manifold. It's our oil cooler, oil filters right here. It's got O-rings on the bottom. Don't disturb those. But we gotta get the oil pressuring sending unit out here. So. I'm going to use an inch and a sixteenth inch wrench here. You put it on there. It's a little tight to get started, but it does come pretty much right out. Use a socket over the top if you have that. So the adapter or the assembly you're going to put together here, really in the end we're just going to tee in. We're just going to get our, put a tee fitting, we're going to move this out, space it out, put a tee, real simple, and then have an A-in fitting for our braided stainless line pickup for our turbocharger oil feed line. Um, but I want to go over something real quick here. It's basic mechanic knowledge. You may or may not know this. So here's the fitting here. The top of it is an A-in fitting. A-in is Army Navy. It's flared. Nothing, there's nothing here. Teflon tape and a flared fitting doesn't go together. You don't put that together. This is MPT, male pipe thread. This is made for th this side here, all right? Teflon is actually the lubricant, all right? Start off a nice straight piece. Now it matters how you put it on. If you put it on in the other direction, 
as you're spinning it in, it's unwinding it off. Okay? So you put the fitting, I put it in my left hand, I start from the bottom, like so. And then I go around the top of it. All right? A couple times around, break it off. And then clean it. You know, you want to make sure that none of this gets in front of the middle of it. But this way, it's oriented in the direction. So as you thread it on, it stays put and it's lubricant as the male pipe thread engages with the female portion. Okay, so pointers. Nothing on the flare. Ever, ever, ever. It's not made. The seal is the flare. Male pipe thread. Got to get in the right direction. Holding your left hand across the top. All right, so let's do it. Okay, first one is the extension. It's going to bring it away so that when we rotate this, we don't run, in, run into there. It's going to bring it back so we're going to oil feed line on. It's the right length, the right fit, no rubbing, chafing, no leaks, anything like that. And this really was a great idea to take this out. Very simple, the five, but if you try to do this in the car, you're on top of it, it, it just sets you up for a potential problem. Take it out of the vehicle, do it like this. All right. Make sure it's nice and square. This is our next piece, goes on here. All right. In this case, 12 millimeters. Switch right back on, extending out. And we'll do the same thing here. Tighten this up. Orientation should be somewhere like that. Last one for the top. Nothing over the hole. Nice and clean. That's it, ready to go back in the vehicle.